Hipparcos was a scientific satellite of the European Space Agency (ESA), launched in 1989 and operated until 1993. It was the first space experiment devoted to precision astrometry, the accurate measurement of the positions of celestial objects on the sky. This permitted the accurate determination of proper motions and parallaxes of stars, allowing a determination of their distance and tangential velocity. When combined with radial velocity measurements from spectroscopy, this pinpointed all six quantities needed to determine the motion of stars. The resulting Hipparcos catalog, a high-precision catalog of more than 118,200 stars, was published in 1997. The lower precision Tycho catalog of more than a million stars was published at the same time, while the enhanced Tycho 2 catalog of 2.5 million stars was published in 2000. Hipparcos' follow up mission, Gaia, was launched in 2013. The word, Hipparcos, is an acronym for High Precision Parallax Collecting Satellite and also a reference to the ancient Greek astronomer Hipparchus of Nicaea, who is noted for applications of trigonometry to astronomy and his discovery of the precession of the equinoxes. <laughs> <laughs> Background By the second half of the 20th century, the accurate measurement of star positions from the ground was running into essentially insurmountable barriers to improvements in accuracy, especially for large angle measurements and systematic terms. Problems were dominated by the effects of the Earth's atmosphere, but were compounded by complex optical terms, thermal and gravitational instrument flexures, and the absence of all sky visibility. A formal proposal to make these exacting observations from space was first put forward in 1967. Although originally proposed to the French space agency CNES, it was considered too complex and expensive for a single national program. Its acceptance within the European Space Agency's scientific program, in 1980, was the result of a lengthy process of study and lobbying. The underlying scientific motivation was to determine the physical properties of the stars through the measurement of their distances and space motions, and thus to place theoretical studies of stellar structure and evolution, and studies of galactic structure and kinematics, on a more secure empirical basis. Observationally, the objective was to provide the positions, parallaxes, and annual proper motions for some 100,000 stars with an unprecedented accuracy of 0.002 arcseconds, a target in practice eventually surpassed by a factor of two. The name of the space telescope, Hipparchos, was an acronym for High Precision Parallax Collecting Satellite, and it also reflected the name of the ancient Greek astronomer Hipparchus, who is considered the founder of trigonometry and the discoverer of the precession of the equinoxes due to the Earth wobbling on its axis. <laughs> Topic. Satellite and payload The spacecraft carried a single all-reflective, eccentric Schmidt telescope, with an aperture of 29 cm in. A special beam combining mirror superimposed two fields of view, 58 degrees apart, into the common focal plane. This complex mirror consisted of two mirrors tilted in opposite directions, each occupying half of the rectangular entrance pupil, and providing an unvenetted field of view of about 1 degree times 1 degree. The telescope used a system of grids, at the focal surface, composed of 2,688 alternate opaque and transparent bands, with a period of 1.208 arc sec 8 .2 micrometers. Behind this grid system, an image dissector tube photomultiplier type detector with a sensitive field of view of about 38 arc sec diameter converted the modulated light into a sequence of photon counts with a sampling frequency of 1200 Hz from which the phase of the entire pulse train from a star could be derived. The apparent angle between two stars in the combined fields of view, modulo the grid period, was obtained from the phase difference of the two star pulse trains. Originally targeting the observation of some 100,000 stars, with an astrometric accuracy of about 0.002 arcsec, the final Hipparchos catalog comprised nearly 120,000 stars with a median accuracy of slightly better than 0.001 arcsec, 1 milliarcsec. An additional photomultiplier system viewed a beam splitter in the optical path and was used as a star mapper. Its purpose was to monitor and determine the satellite attitude, and in the process, to gather photometric and astrometric data of all stars down to about 11th magnitude. These measurements were made in two broad bands approximately corresponding to B and V in the Johnson UBV photometric system. 
The positions of these latter stars were to be determined to a precision of 0.03 arcsec, which is a factor of 25 less than the main mission stars. Originally targeting the observation of around 400,000 stars, the resulting Tycho catalog comprised just over 1 million stars, with a subsequent analysis extending this to the Tycho II catalog of about 2.5 million stars. The attitude of the spacecraft about its center of gravity was controlled to scan the celestial sphere in a regular processional motion maintaining a constant inclination between the spin axis and the direction to the Sun. The spacecraft spun around its z-axis at the rate of 11.25 revolutions per day, 168.75 arcsec s at an angle of 43 degrees to the sun. The z-axis rotated about the sun satellite line at 6.4 revolutions per year. The spacecraft consisted of two platforms and six vertical panels, all made of aluminum honeycomb. The solar array consisted of three deployable sections, generating around 300 W in total. Two S-band antennas were located on the top and bottom of the spacecraft, providing an omni-directional downlink data rate of 24 kilobits per second. An attitude and orbit control subsystem comprising five newton hydrazine thrusters for course maneuvers, 20 millinewton cold gas thrusters for attitude control, and gyroscopes for attitude determination ensured correct dynamic attitude control and determination during the operational lifetime. Topic. Principles Some key features of the observations were as follows Through observations from space, the effects of astronomical seeing due to the atmosphere, instrumental gravitational flexor and thermal distortions could be obviated or minimized. All sky visibility permitted a direct linking of the stars observed all over the celestial sphere. The two viewing directions of the satellite, separated by a large and suitable angle 58 degrees, resulted in a rigid connection between quasi-instantaneous one-dimensional observations in different parts of the sky. In turn, this led to parallax determinations which are absolute rather than relative, with respect to some unknown zero point. The continuous ecliptic-based scanning of the satellite resulted in an optimum use of the available observing time, with a resulting catalog providing reasonably homogeneous sky density and uniform astrometric accuracy over the entire celestial sphere. The various geometrical scan configurations for each star, at multiple epochs throughout the three-year observation program, resulted in a dense network of one-dimensional positions from which the barycentric coordinate direction, the parallax, and the object's proper motion, could be solved for in what was effectively a global least squares reduction of the totality of observations. The astrometric parameters as well as their standard errors and correlation coefficients were derived in the process. Since the number of independent geometrical observations per object was large, typically of order 30 compared with the number of unknowns for the standard model 5 astrometric unknowns per star astrometric solutions not complying with this simple five-parameter model, could be expanded to take into account the effects of double or multiple stars, or nonlinear photocentric motions ascribed to unresolved astrometric binaries. A somewhat larger number of actual observations per object, of order 110, provided accurate and homogeneous photometric information for each star, from which mean magnitudes, variability amplitudes, and in many cases period and variability type classification could be undertaken. Topic. Development, launch and operations The Hipparcos satellite was financed and managed under the overall authority of the European Space Agency. The main industrial contractors were Matra Marconi Space now EADS Astrium and Alenia Spazio now Thales Alenia Space. Other hardware components were supplied as follows, the beam combining mirror from REOSC at Saint-Pierre-du-Pere, the spherical, folding and relay mirrors from Carl Zeiss AG in Oberkoken, the external straylight baffles from CASA in Madrid, the modulating grid from CSEM in Nucatel, the mechanism control system and the thermal control electronics from Dornier satellite systems in Friedrichshafen, optical filters, the experiment structures and the attitude and orbit control system from Matra Marconi Space in Valise, 
instrument switching mechanisms from Orlikon Contraves in Zurich, the image dissector tube and photomultiplier detectors assembled by the Dutch Space Research Organisation, SRON in the Netherlands, the refocusing assembly mechanism designed by TNOTPD in Delft, the electrical power subsystem from British Aerospace in Bristol, the structure and reaction control system from Daimler-Benz Aerospace in Bremen, the solar arrays and thermal control system from Fokker Space System in Leiden, the data handling and telecommunications system from Saab Ericsson Space in Gothenburg, and the Apogee Boost Motor from SEP in France. Groups from the Institut d'Astrophysique in Liège and the Laboratoire d'Astronomie Spatiale in Marseille contributed optical performance, calibration and alignment test procedures, Captec in Dublin and Logica in London contributed to the onboard software and calibration. The Hipparcos satellite was launched with the direct broadcast satellite TVSAT-2 as co-passenger on an Ariane 4 launch vehicle, Flight V-33, from Kourou, French Guiana, on 8 August 1989. Launched into a geostationary transfer orbit, the Mage 2 Apogee boost motor failed to fire, and the intended geostationary orbit was never achieved. However, with the addition of further ground stations, in addition to ESA Operations Control Center at ESOC in Germany, the satellite was successfully operated in its geostationary transfer orbit for almost 3.5 years. All of the original mission goals were, eventually, exceeded. Including an estimate for the scientific activities related to the satellite observations and data processing, Hipparco's mission cost about 600 million euros 2000 economic conditions, and its execution involved some 200 European scientists and more than 2,000 individuals in European industry. Topic Hipparco's input catalog The satellite observations relied on a predefined list of target stars. Stars were observed as the satellite rotated, by a sensitive region of the image dissector tube detector. This pre-defined star list formed the Hipparcos input catalog, each star in the final Hipparcos catalog was contained in the input catalog. The input catalog was compiled by the Inca Consortium over the period 1982-89, finalized pre-launch, and published both digitally and in printed form. Although fully superseded by the satellite results, it nevertheless includes supplemental information on multiple system components as well as compilations of radial velocities and spectral types which, not observed by the satellite, were not included in the published Hipparcos catalog. Constraints on total observing time, and on the uniformity of stars across the celestial sphere for satellite operations and data analysis, led to an input catalog of some 118,000 stars. It merged two components, first, a survey of around 58,000 objects as complete as possible to the following limiting magnitudes, VV the second component comprised additional stars selected according to their scientific interest, with none fainter than about magnitude V equals 13 mag. These were selected from around 200 scientific proposals submitted on the basis of an invitation for proposals issued by ESA in 1982, and prioritized by the Scientific Proposal Selection Committee in consultation with the Input Catalog Consortium. This selection had to balance a priori scientific interest, and the observing program's limiting magnitude, total observing time, and sky uniformity constraints. Topic data reductions for the main mission results, the data analysis was carried out by two independent scientific teams, NDAC and FAST, together comprising some 100 astronomers and scientists, mostly from European ESA member state institutes. The analyses, proceeding from nearly 1,000 gigabits of satellite data acquired over 3.5 years, incorporated a comprehensive system of cross-checking and validation, and is described in detail in the published catalogue. A detailed optical calibration model was included to map the transformation from sky to instrumental coordinates. Its adequacy could be verified by the detailed measurement residuals. The Earth's orbit, and the satellite's orbit with respect to the Earth, were essential for describing the location of the observer at each epoch of observation, and were supplied by an appropriate Earth ephemeris combined with accurate satellite ranging. Corrections due to special relativity stellar aberration made use of the corresponding satellite velocity. Modifications due to general relativistic light bending were significant 4 milliarc sec at 90 degrees to the ecliptic and corrected for deterministically assuming gamma equals 1 in the PPN formalism. Residuals were examined to establish limits on any deviations from this general relativistic value, and no significant discrepancies were found. The Hipparchos reference frame 
The satellite observations essentially yielded highly accurate relative positions of stars with respect to each other, throughout the measurement period 1989 in the absence of direct observations of extragalactic sources apart from marginal observations of quasar 3C273 the resulting rigid reference frame was transformed to an inertial frame of reference linked to extragalactic sources. This allows surveys at different wavelengths to be directly correlated with the Hipparchos stars, and ensures that the catalogue proper motions are, as far as possible, kinematically non-rotating. The determination of the relevant three solid body rotation angles, and the three time dependent rotation rates, was conducted and completed in advance of the catalog publication. This resulted in an accurate but indirect link to an inertial, extragalactic, reference frame. A variety of methods to establish this reference frame link before catalog publication were included and appropriately weighted, interferometric observations of radio stars by VLBI networks, Merlin and VLA, observations of quasars relative to Hipparchos stars using CCDs, photographic plates, and the Hubble Space Telescope, photographic programs to determine stellar proper motions with respect to extragalactic objects Bonn, Kiev, Lick, Potsdam, Yale, San Juan, and comparison of Earth rotation parameters obtained by VLBI and by ground-based optical observations of Hipparchos stars. Although very different in terms of instruments, observational methods and objects involved, the various techniques generally agreed to within 10 milliarc sec in the orientation and 1 milliarc sec per year in the rotation of the system. From appropriate weighting, the coordinate axes defined by the published catalog are believed to be aligned with the extragalactic radio frame to within plus or minus 0.6 milliarc sec at the epoch J1991.25, and non-rotating with respect to distant extragalactic objects to within plus or minus 0.25 milliarc sec per year. The Hipparchos and Tycho catalogs were then constructed such that the Hipparchos reference frame coincides, to within observational uncertainties, with the International Celestial Reference System the ICRS, and representing the best estimates at the time of the catalog completion in 1996. The resulting Hipparchos reference frame is thus the materialization of the ICRS in the optical. It extends and improves the J2000 FK5 system, retaining approximately the global orientation of that system but without its regional errors. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Double and multiple stars. Whilst of enormous astronomical importance, double stars and multiple stars provided considerable complications to the observations due to the finite size and profile of the detector's sensitive field of view and to the data analysis. The data processing classified the astrometric solutions as follows, single star solutions, 100,038 entries, of which 6,763 were flagged as suspected double component solutions Annex C, 13,211 entries, comprising 24,588 components in 12,195 solutions Acceleration solutions Annex G, 2,622 solutions Orbital solutions Annex O, 235 entries variability induced movers annex v 288 entries stochastic solutions annex x 1561 entries no valid astrometric solution 263 entries of which 218 were flagged as suspected double if a binary star has a long orbital period such that nonlinear motions of the photocenter were insignificant over the short 3 year measurement duration the binary nature of the star would pass unrecognized by hipparchos but could show as a hipparchos proper motion motion discrepant compared to those established from long temporal baseline proper motion programs on ground. Higher order photocentric motions could be represented by a 7-parameter, or even 9-parameter model fit compared to the standard 5-parameter model, and typically such models could be enhanced in complexity until suitable fits were obtained. A complete orbit, requiring 7 elements, was determined for 45 systems. Orbital periods close to one year can become degenerate with the parallax, resulting in unreliable solutions for both. Triple or higher order systems provided further challenges to the data processing. Topic photometric observations The highest accuracy photometric data were provided as a byproduct of the main mission astrometric observations. They were made in a broadband visible light passband, specific to Hipparchos, and designated HP. 
The median photometric precision, for HP topic radial velocities Classical astrometry concerns only motions in the plane of the sky and ignores the star's radial velocity, i.e. its space motion along the line of sight. Whilst critical for an understanding of stellar kinematics, and hence population dynamics, its effect is generally imperceptible to astrometric measurements in the plane of the sky, and therefore it is generally ignored in large-scale astrometric surveys. In practice, it can be measured as a Doppler shift of the spectral lines. More strictly, however, the radial velocity does enter a rigorous astrometric formulation. Specifically, a space velocity along the line of sight means that the transformation from tangential linear velocity to angular proper motion is a function of time. The resulting effect of secular or perspective acceleration is the interpretation of a transverse acceleration actually arising from a purely linear space velocity with a significant radial component, with the positional effect proportional to the product of the parallax, the proper motion, and the radial velocity. At the accuracy levels of Hipparchos it is of marginal importance only for the nearest stars with the largest radial velocities and proper motions, but was accounted for in the 21 cases for which the accumulated positional effect over two years exceeds 0.1 milliarc sec. Radial velocities for Hipparchos catalog stars, to the extent that they are presently known from independent ground-based surveys, can be found from the astronomical database of the Centre de Denaise Astronomiques de Strasbourg. The absence of reliable distances for the majority of stars means that the angular measurements made, astrometrically, in the plane of the sky, cannot generally be converted into true space velocities in the plane of the sky. For this reason, astrometry characterizes the transverse motions of stars in angular measure e arcsec per year, rather than in kilometer per second or equivalent. Similarly, the typical absence of reliable radial velocities means that the transverse space motion when known, is, in any case, only a component of the complete, three-dimensional, space velocity. Topic published catalogs The final Hipparchos catalog was the result of the critical comparison and merging of the two NDAC and FAST consortia analyses, and contains 118,218 entries stars or multiple stars, corresponding to an average of some three stars per square degree over the entire sky. Median precision of the five astrometric parameters HP calibration continued. A number of effects in the data that had not been fully accounted for were studied, such as scan phase discontinuities and micrometeoroid-induced attitude jumps. A re-reduction of the associated steps of the analysis was eventually undertaken. This has led to improved astrometric accuracies for stars brighter than HAPI equals 9.0 mag, reaching a factor of about 3 for the brightest stars HP. All catalog data are available online from the Center de Denaise Astronomiques de Strasbourg. Topic: <laughs> Scientific results. The Hipparchos results have affected a very broad range of astronomical research, which can be classified into three major themes. The provision of an accurate reference frame, this has allowed the consistent and rigorous re-reduction of historical astrometric measurements, including those from Schmidt plates, meridian circles, the 100-year-old astrographic catalogue, and 150 years of Earth orientation measurements. These, in turn, have yielded a dense reference framework with high accuracy, long-term proper motions the Tycho II catalogue. Reduction of current state-of-the-art survey data has yielded the dense UCAC-2 catalog of the U.S. Naval Observatory on the same reference system, and improved astrometric data from recent surveys such as the Sloan Digital Sky Survey and 2MASS. Implicit in the high accuracy reference frame is the measurement of gravitational lensing and the detection and characterization of double and multiple stars. Constraints on stellar structure and stellar evolution, the accurate distances and luminosities of 100,000 stars has provided the most comprehensive and accurate data set of fundamental stellar parameters to date, placing constraints on internal rotation, element diffusion, convective motions, and asteroseismology. Combined with theoretical models and other data it yields evolutionary masses, radii, and ages for large numbers of stars covering a wide range of evolutionary states. 
Galactic kinematics and dynamics, the uniform and accurate distances and proper motions have provided a substantial advance in understanding of stellar kinematics and the dynamical structure of the solar neighborhood, ranging from the presence and evolution of clusters, associations and moving groups, the presence of resonance motions due to the galaxy's central bar and spiral arms, determination of the parameters describing galactic rotation, discrimination of the disk and halo populations, evidence for halo accretion, and the measurement of space motion of runaway stars, globular clusters, and many other types of star, associated with these major themes. Hipparchos has provided results in topics as diverse as solar system science, including mass determinations of asteroids, Earth's rotation and Chandler wobble, the internal structure of white dwarfs, the masses of brown dwarfs, the characterization of extra solar planets and their host stars, the height of the Sun above the galactic mid plane, the age of the universe, the stellar initial mass function and star formation rates, and strategies for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The high-precision multi-epic photometry has been used to measure variability and stellar pulsations in many classes of objects. The Hipparchos and Tycho catalogs are now routinely used to point ground-based telescopes, navigate space missions, and drive public planetaria. Since 1997, several thousand scientific papers have been published making use of the Hipparchos and Tycho catalogs. A detailed review of the Hipparchos scientific literature between 1997 to 2007 was published in 2009, and a popular account of the project in 2010. Some examples of notable results include listed chronologically, studies of galactic rotation from Cepheid variables, the nature of Delta Scuti variables, studies of local stellar kinematics, testing the white dwarf mass radius relation. The structure and dynamics of the Hyades cluster Kinematics of Wolf-Rayet stars and O-type runaway stars Subdwarf parallaxes, metal-rich clusters and the thick disk Fine structure of the red giant clump and associated distance determinations Unexpected stellar velocity distribution in the warped galactic disk Confirming the Lutz-Kelker bias of parallax measurement Refining the Oort and galactic constants Galactic disk dark matter, terrestrial impact cratering and the law of large numbers Vertical motion and expansion of the Gould belt The use of gamma-ray bursts as direction and time markers in SETI strategies Evidence of a galaxy merger in the early formation history of the Milky Way Study of nearby OBE associations Close approaches of stars to the solar system Studies of binary star orbits and masses the HD 209458 planetary transits Formation of the stellar galactic halo and thick disk The local density of matter in the galaxy and the Oort limit Ice age epochs and the Sun's path through the galaxy Local kinematics of K and M giants and the concept of superclusters An improved reference frame for long-term Earth rotation studies The local stellar velocity field in the galaxy Identification of two possible siblings of the Sun, HIP 87382 and HIP 47399, to be studied for evidence of exoplanets. Topic: The Pleiades distance controversy. One controversial result has been the derived proximity, at about 120 parsecs, of the Pleiades cluster, established both from the original catalogue as well as from the revised analysis. This has been contested by various other recent work, placing the mean cluster distance at around 130 parsecs. According to 2012 paper the anomaly was due to the use of a weighted mean when there is a correlation between distances and distance errors for stars in clusters. It is resolved by using an unweighted mean. There is no systematic bias in the Hipparchos data when it comes to star clusters. In August 2014, the discrepancy between the cluster distance of 120.2 plus or minus 1.5 parsecs (pc) as measured by Hipparchos and the distance of 133.5 plus or minus 1.2% derived with other techniques was confirmed by parallax measurements made using VLBI, which gave 136.2 plus or minus 1.2%, the most accurate and precise precise distance yet presented for the cluster. Topic. Polaris 
Another distance debate set off by Hipparchos is for the distance to the star Polaris. Topic: People. Pierre Lacroute, Observatory of Strasbourg, proposer of space astrometry in 1967. Michael Perryman, ESA project scientist 1981 to 1997 and project manager during satellite operations 1989 to 1993. Catherine Tyrion, Observatoire de Paris Mutin, leader of Input Catalog Consortium. Eric Hogg, leader of the TDAC Consortium. Leonard Lindegren, leader of the NDAC Consortium. Jean Kovalevska, leader of the FAST Consortium. Adrian Blau, Chair of the Observing Program Selection Committee Hipparco's science team, Uli Bastian, Pierluigi Bernacca, Michel Crayet, Francesco Donati, Michel Grenin, Michael Gruing, Eric Hogg, Jean Kovalevska, Flor van Leeuwen, Leonard Lindegren, Hans van der Merrill, François Mignard, Andrew Murray, Michael Perryman Chair, Rudolf Le Poole, Hans Schreiber, Catherine Tyrone Franco Emiliani, ESA project manager 1981 to 85. Hamid Hassan, ESA project manager 1985 to 89. Dietmar Heger, ESA ESOC spacecraft operations manager. Michel Buffard, Matra Marconi space project manager. Bruno Strim, Alenia Spazio project manager. Topic. See also. Gaia – follow-up mission launched in 2013 Topic. References Topic. External links The Hipparcos Space Astrometry Mission at ESA Hipparcos and Tycho Catalogues at the Kazu Astronomical Data Center, Institute of Astronomy, University of Cambridge Hipparco's main catalogue and Tycho 1 catalogue at the CDs in Strasbourg